Now let's create a project and use Spring Boot to bootstrap it, right? There are multiple ways in which you can create a simple Spring application using Spring Boot. The first approach that we're gonna try, we're gonna try all those multiple approaches in this, uh, in this course, but the first approach we're gonna try is to create a project, rather create a Maven project, right? So here are the steps. So with my Spring Tool Suite open over here, I'm going to right click here and uh, choose new Maven project. We have a bunch of other options over here. You can choose a Spring Starter project, a Spring project. If you're not gonna go into that yet, we're gonna be creating a simple Maven project and we're gonna add the Spring dependencies to it. So I'm gonna choose the Maven project option. Uh, I choose this create a simple project to skip archetype selection option. So if I do not skip the archetype selection, it basically lets me choose from one of the different templates or archetypes uh, that come with Maven that forms a starting point for my Maven project. If I skip the archetype selection, I'm going to get a simple bare bones Maven project, which is perfectly fine. We want to start from the scratch. So I have this checkbox checked. I click next and uh, I'm going to have a bunch of details that I need to add for this Maven project, the group ID, the artifact ID, and the version. The group ID is kind of like a package name. It uniquely identifies the namespace for my project. The artifact ID is kind of like a project name. I can give the name of the project itself. The version is basically the version of the component. For the version, I'll just leave it as 0.0.1 .0 snapshot. That's like the starting version, so this is fine. For the group ID, I'm gonna choose io. Java Brains, Spring Boot Quick Start, and the artifact ID is going to be Course API. And I can fill in a bunch more details. The name is Java Brains, Course API, and I'm going to click Finish. Now, what Maven is going to do is it's going to start. Uh, it's going to download a simple template and it's going to create this project here. So this is the project that it has created. It has a bunch of source folders. They're all empty right now. But you see it already has one dependency, which is the Java system library 1.5. It has all these jars downloaded. Here's the pom.xml that I had mentioned earlier. This is where you can declare your dependencies. And uh, open that, double click on it, and then choose this pom.xml tab. What you're seeing here now is a graphical representation of it. So if you click on this last tab over here, you're gonna get a text representation, which is plain XML. Now here are the details that we've already entered, the group ID, artifact ID, version name, and uh, version and the name. And now with this, we have a simple Maven project. Now what do I have to do to make this a Spring Boot project? There are a bunch of steps that we have to follow. What we've done so far has got nothing to do with Spring Boot. It's just a simple, Maven project. Now what are the steps that I need to do to convert this into a fully working Spring Boot project? Step one, add this block of code here called the parent section with the artifact ID and the group ID having these values. The group ID is arg.springframework.boot, artifact ID is Spring Boot Starter Parent, and the version is 1.4.2 release. Now what is this doing? This is basically declaring that our project is a child of this parent project. So this parent project and child project is a very Maven concept. It's a concept that comes with Maven. You can have a Maven project, which is a parent, and another Maven project, which is a child of that parent. The idea is that you can have configuration defined in the parent project and have the child project inherit the configuration. So what we're doing here is we are setting our project, which is the course API project, to be a child of this project here that we're calling the parent. The project is Spring Boot Starter Parent, right? We are making our project be a child of the Spring Boot Starter Parent project. Now, what is this project and why do we need to make this the parent of our project? You remember I told you how Spring Boot has the philosophy of convention over configuration. For 80% of the use case, Spring Boot provides default configuration and only for the 20% use case we have uh, our own configuration that we have to implement. So Spring Boot is an opinionated framework. There are some configurations that it comes with out of the box. Now what the Spring Boot team has done is they've created a project 
called the Spring Boot Startup Parent. And they've put all the default Maven configuration into that project, right? So this one project called the Spring Boot Startup Parent contains that opinionated set of Maven configurations. And now when you're creating a Spring Boot project, all you have to do is declare that project as a parent, and now your project contains that same configuration. It inherits it thanks to the Maven parent child inheriting, right? So that's why we need to put this as a parent, so that we are inheriting all the default Maven configuration from the Spring Boot starter parent. We're gonna go into a little bit of details about what this parent is a little bit later, but it's step one for now. Just add this parent block, into the pom.xml so that we are importing certain Maven configuration. All right, step two is to actually declare the dependencies. You remember I told you that Maven serves as a purpose of dependency management. We specify the list of all the jars that we need, and then Maven is gonna download it and add it to the class path. Now, what is the, what is the list of jars that we're gonna need? We are creating a web application here, right? This is a coarse REST API, so it has to listen to REST requests and provide REST response. It's all over HTTP, so it's a web application. Now, there are a bunch of jars that you're gonna have to import in order to build a Spring web application. It's not a simple list, it's, it's quite a big list, right? Now, one thing you could do is identify that list and add each and every entry into this pom.xml, which is what you would typically do in a Maven project, right? You identify all the dependencies, all the jars that you're going to need, and make a list of all those dependencies into your pom.xml. But here's where Spring Boot helps us again. Spring Boot says, well, we know that if you're creating a web project, you need these list of jars that you're going to have to add to every web application anyway. So what they've done is they've created a meta dependency, which is like a parent dependency, which in turn pulls in all the jars that you would need. Right? And all you need to do is establish one dependency to that meta dependency. So this is where you specify Maven dependencies typically. It's going to be step two. I'm going to add this block over here, which is a dependency block. Again, the group ID is org.springframework.boot. And the artifact ID, the dependency that we're actually importing is Spring Boot Starter Web. Again, think of this as a meta dependency, a kind of wrapper dependency, which pulls in all the web-related jars so that we don't have to add each one of them one by one, okay? Now with this added, I can save the pom.xml and uh, the ID is gonna go fetch all the jars. So if you notice here, there are no other dependencies except for the JRE. Now the minute I save this, Maven is gonna build the workspace and here you see we have a list of, uh, we have a, a new node called Maven dependencies and if I were to expand this, you see all the jars that a web application would need is downloaded automatically. We would have had to add these uh, jars manually one by one, but we don't have to do that anymore because we have this convenience dependency called Spring Boot Starter Web. And just by adding this one dependency, we're all set to build a web application with Spring Boot. Now we notice here that there is an error. And if I go to the markers tab, Maven problems, here you see it says that the project configuration is not up to date with pom.xml. Select Maven update project in order to fix this. So I'm gonna right click on the project name, go to Maven, and then choose update project. Click OK. And the project gets updated and we have all the dependencies available over here. So another thing you might have noticed is that the JRE library was 1.5, but it's been updated to 1.6 because that's again a configuration that we are importing from the Spring Boot parent. Now what if we don't like 1.6? 1.6 is ancient, right? We want the latest version of JDK, which as of me recording this video today, it's 1.8. Now how do I specify that I need 1.8 as the Java version? Another configuration for this, just step three, I'm gonna paste this code, which is basically a properties section, and I can define a property called java.version and make that 1.8. If I were to save this and have Maven do its thing, I'm going to have to update project again. Now here you see the JRE has been updated to 1.8. All right, so this is the Maven configuration. Now let's move on to the next step in making this a Spring Boot application.